Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this Accountant Marketing 101 webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can attract, influence, and educate your clients in changing times. My name is Lauren Detweiler, and I'm the Content Manager at Counting Works Pro. And I am Lee Reams, founder and CEO of Counting Works Pro. And I like this subject more on the influence part and then a little bit into how uh, a lot of different marketing techniques can help you change people from uh, kind of an awareness, I don't know how I have a problem, to the intent buyer stage. So there's a lot of good information in here, good takeaways that you can use in your practice in the coming years. So let's just run through the agenda really quickly. Uh, some of the topics we're going to cover on the attract client side, we'll be talking about your website, word of mouth referrals, marketplaces, social media, directory listings. So that impacts your SEO, uh, Google My Business, which we'll also call GMB in the future, and also video articles and your content. On the influence client side, uh, what your clients really care about most in four ways that you can make them happy every day and continue to have that client satisfaction and retention be high. And then on the educate side, how you can use your content newsletters and social media to continue that educational relationship going forward. Uh, and then we're going to run through some Q&A and have some special offers at the end as well. So about this webinar, it's about 50 minutes long with five minutes of Q&A. Uh, we'll have three polling questions for those who are looking for CPE credit. Make sure you stay to the end for those special offers as well, as I mentioned. And it's also required if you are looking for CPE. Uh, the webinar will be recorded and available for playback. And while it is designed for US-based small tax and accounting practices, any business or firm can benefit as well. And on that CPE credit, here are some of the restrictions. So you must be a CPA and must participate and be on the webinar for the full 50 minutes. You also have to answer all the polling questions and then you'll receive an email with info on how you can log in or create an account with the County Works Pro CPE site. And with that, Lee, I'll let you kick it off. All right, thank you, Lauren, for that introduction. Let's get started. So the thing that I wanted to bring up first before we get into the meat of this presentation is, you know, people have said the world has changed, obviously, because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the way, more importantly, the way people communicate and or work has changed. So the question for tax and accounting professionals is how do we change the way we do business? How do we enable technology uh, to allow us to still, still get in front of clients and make the experience as close to a face-to-face -face interview as possible. Uh, some statistics that came out in the last uh, few weeks uh, were about people returning to work. There's about 25% of, uh, I think it's a little over 28% of uh, employees are now back in the office. There's a lot of new regulations that businesses have to look at uh, when they bring people back. And uh, what I'm getting at is that there is also a big movement on people wanting to remain remote. Uh, they enjoy their lifestyles now. They enjoy not having to commute. Many people have relocated. So the reality is for you and your practice, whether you deal with businesses or uh, individuals, you're going to have the same type of scenarios. So uh, the question is, how can you establish yourself online, You know, create a, a very strong digital footprint to uh, continue to grow um, and expand your practice in the future? So one of the things we like to say is providing a five-star tax and accounting service alone is not enough to satisfy clients in the digital age. And there's a few items that are behind that. One, um, your expertise, uh, the relationship that you have of, of, with clients is part of the equation when people decide whom they're going to continue to work with or whom they're going to choose whom to work with next. People are used to experiences like they see in Amazon and Apple, and they expect that same type of experience when they deal with a CPA firm, an enrolled agent, a bookkeeper, or uh, a, a tax pro. So it is uh, crucial to be a trusted advisor from the first conversation through the rest of the relationship. Uh, we have a series of webcasts that we're doing. Our first one was on first impressions, uh, how important that is uh, to establish. This one we're going to take a little bit further uh, to expand, and there's going to be a lot of takeaways here uh, that you can take into your practice here in the next coming uh, months and years. So we strongly believe that individuals and small business owners who work with pros, independent professionals like you, achieve, achieve better financial outcomes and are more prosperous through their lives. So the amount of money you're saving them, the advice that you provide, uh, helping businesses establish the right entity type, 
helping people minimize their capital gains taxes. There's a lot of different ways that our industry is helping individuals. And what's great in the last year, this is the first year we, we came back and started growing some market share again. So the complexity is obviously there for uh, taxpayers and business owners. They know um, that they need help, that they can't understand it all. And that makes some great opportunities for uh, you to succeed as well. So today you will learn how to attract prospects with your online presence, uh, positively influence your client, client's lives, educate clients consistently, showcasing your expertise is a big thing about what we do here at CountyWorks Pro. And we're gonna talk about it, some different strategies that will, uh, uh, things that you can use in your own practice and much more. So let's get started here. So how to attract clients in changing times. So I wanna go through the six, steps to execute a retention cycle. And this is uh, how it is. It's helpful, I think, if you look at your marketing differently. So you may not be aware of the different stages that people go through. So this is more kind of a marketing 101 type of class. So the, you know, the first thing is you need to attract. Um, this is during the prospect phase. You then want uh, these prospects to consider you. So what are the, the signals that will help uh, these people then decide to convert to become clients? And then you hand off into the client phase, right? So how are you going to serve them? What technology and am I using it to make it easier to serve these clients? Am I using digital interview software? Am I doing online appointment scheduling, uh, client um, uh, portals, making it easy to exchange documents? Am I using uh, digital workflows, tools like Trello or other uh, popular uh, software that's out there? Uh, those are kind of areas that you're going to worry about during the serve sign. So we 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 can pump you up. We can make the greatest first impression ever. But if you blow it at the serve cycle, that's when you get some negative reviews, and you can, you you may not have as healthy of a practice as you would like. After that, we go into satisfy, and then we want to create advocates. So the whole point here is a lot of what County Works Pro is. We put your marketing on autopilot. And these are tools that are very easy to get set up. So, you know, we, we get our clients database loaded. We start a campaign where we're uh, updating your blog content, your website, uh, your client newsletters, um, your social media side. So finding all these different ways to push content out to your clients makes it easy to satisfy them. And at that point, they become referral sources. So, you know, one, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get uh, higher retention rates. We're trying to create a scenario where you can demand higher fees, happier clients, more knowledgeable clients, uh, you know, pros that are responsive. They are able to demand higher fees. And then more importantly, we want them to, your clients to become ambassadors of your brand. That is the beauty of the internet. The people will share their experiences with you. And even in the referral, that's kind of the way the referral pipeline has changed. So we'll get into some details of that later on here. So how to attract more clients. In the digital age, it takes much more than a website to get found online. And I think sometimes people don't understand that concept. Not everyone understands digital media, digital marketing, but just putting up a website without all these different attributes, without having uh, uh, a position on social media sites, um, it's gonna make it harder for you to get found. And the reason that is, is Google and the algorithms, basically think of it as kind of like a popularity contest. So the more signals your brand is putting out online, not just on your website, the more credible, the more trust they have in your brand that if they show you with the search results, the searcher is gonna have a good experience when they communicate with you. And that's the, the whole goal here. If they have a bad experience, people are gonna stop using Google and other tools, right? So that is the reason the algorithms continue to change. Um, clients are more technologically savvy than ever before. They are constantly connected to the internet in many ways, many times spending you know, many hours on their mobile devices. And this goes beyond just young people. You know, all demographics now are using um, connectivity and mobile devices to communicate in both their personal and professional lives. So your goal is to consistently show up online in multiple channels. Um, your prospects and your current clients are already spending time online. So your brand you know, needs to have a presence that meets them where they're at. I love saying that, where they're at. Um, normally we wouldn't write that way, but it is important to understand that you know, these, these are the tools, specifically social media, where people are spending most of their time. So if your brand does not have a presence there, it's gonna be harder and harder for you to compete with others that are pushing content in the front of their eyes every day. Every day they access these, uh, these apps. So, here are some of the ways successful pros approach this process. We take this from um, 
thousands and thousands of clients and data, and we're going to share this with you. Uh, so I just wanted to give an example of the old days. Hey, all you had is a website, and hopefully your website is secure. Hopefully it is mobile responsive. Uh, hopefully it is professionally designed and is using best practices. But the reality is now people are on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, tax buzz, marketplaces, YouTube, you name it. You want your brand to have a consistent message across all these profiles, and you want to make sure each one of these profiles is optimized. So the question, does your website accurately represent your practice? And does it make prospects want to work with you? So let's start with the tax and accounting website. Uh, when someone does come across your site, so hopefully you're well indexed, if they're doing a branded search, meaning they're searching for you or your practice, you should be coming up number one in the search results. Obviously the, uh, the goal is to search, uh, to come up and search a non-branded terms, meaning um, tax preparation uh, services in Chicago. That, that's kind of a non-branded search. That's when you're starting to really establish your digital presence. But the reality is, you know, what is the message you're trying to get across? Who are you? You know, what do you do? Uh, why do you do it? Why do you love what you're doing? And then how can you help them with their challenges? So a lot of times a mistake we see is people like to talk all about themselves versus speaking to their targeted audience. So if you're targeting restaurants, for example, especially with the resurgence of restaurants coming back and demand, are your graphics looking or speaking to a restaurant owner? Is your copy speaking to their pain points, how you're going to assist them? If it's not, you're not going to convert or attract as many people. The second big thing that people uh, don't understand is the zero click search. And what that phenomenon is, is uh, Google is trying to find answers for searchers that they show in the Google results without someone having to leave the Google results and go to your website. So basically 34% of all desktop searches, and this is more important, 63% of mobile searches today re result in a no-click search. So that is, are you using FAQ snippets? Uh, is your GMB profile uh, accurate and have all its information? Because this is what Google is going to be showing people when they search. So this shift means that businesses must prioritize more than just getting on the first page of search results. They also need to optimize their content in ways that will offer simple answers to common questions. This is when I talk about FAQs and the way um, you earn feature snippets. So your FAQs may speak, uh, get picked up by Google and actually be the de default answer to some of these questions. Most likely that would be the first uh, introduction of your brand to a searcher. And then hopefully you can go from the attract phase on through the life cycle. Um, and then the other thing is show your practice information accurately in map results. Uh, and this is also a signal to Google. If you have a, uh, we'll talk about directories here in a little bit, but if you have uh, missing information or multiple addresses or multiple phone numbers, it is confusing to uh, the searchers and Google will actually, I'm not going to say penalize, but they're going to rank someone that has a cleaner set of contact information uh, when they compare your brand to their brand. So word of mouth referrals. So referrals um, have long been a staple growth technique for practices of all sizes, right? Everyone gets referrals. They're the, the gold standard. Most likely they're more qualified, but the reality is it's been disrupted because even if someone gets a referral through the traditional word of mouth, um, they're still going to Google your brand. And what they find there is going to dictate whether or not they contact you. In addition, people ask for referrals now online versus just calling someone or, you know, at a meeting or a colleague or seeing someone or asking Uncle Joe, whatever, um, they're going to actually ask for a referral to uh, people that may not know. So on uh, platforms like Facebook or uh, Nextdoor, um, this is going on, this conversation is going on every day. So if your practice does not have a solid five-star um, review profile, when someone uh, refers you, or if you don't even have an established, you know, uh, social uh, profile, let's say on Facebook, it's much easier for them to type your name and then your profile comes up and share that versus, you know, if you were missing a profile and having to send them, hey, call me or direct message me. So what I'm getting at is uh, they're researching you online before deciding whether to engage. So many people are not even in the game and they don't realize it. They're, they're actually getting traffic or they're getting their name mentioned, but what people see, they're not liking and they're not calling. So uh, this means that your website and all other items we'll discuss in this presentation play a huge role in whether or not your referrals make it out of the attract stage. I think that's a big takeaway here. 
Um, and you probably already seen some of the uh, effects of this. And if your referral, if, you, if your growth rates have slowed, uh, there's a reason the tax industry grew over 10%. So not, not everyone's slowing. People are booming right now. So the question is, you know, is your practice, uh, you know, attracting new people through even the referral pipelines? Okay, so we're going to jump into our first polling question here. Uh, the referral pipeline has been disrupted by the internet. Prospects are likely to research you online before deciding to engage. Is that true or false? Yeah, we like to give you 30, 40 seconds or so to, uh, to make sure you participate in the polling question. And Hopefully this is more, an easy one. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And after some more dead silence, we'll uh, go ahead and give our version of this answer and uh, move on. So the next important item is marketplaces. And why marketplaces are important is they provide a third party validation of what you're saying in your marketing material that you can control, like your website, your newsletter is actually accurate. Are clients saying the same thing about you as they're seeing when they uh, are looking at your branded material? So marketplace sites are uh, places like Taxpos, like Yelp, like CountingWorks. This is where consumers can, one, read their, uh, your client's experiences about you. Um, a lot of these marketplaces like uh, Taxpos and CountingWorks, we actually can verify whether a client is a client or not. And that gives even more trust factor to the review. Uh, but basically, they can read about you. They can also compare multiple professionals. Uh, they can filter results uh, for better matches based on experience and or uh, areas of expertise. So there's a real valid reason why you want to establish yourself in the marketplace sites. Um, and there's uh, a couple of reasons. So marketplaces are some of the main hosts of reviews, so which are crucial for building your online reputation. Uh, anyone searching on those sites for help is, a, is at the intent level. So we talked about the attract stage uh, prospect versus client. But when you're talking about marketing life cycles, um, not everyone comes in at the intent level. Not everyone is a one call close. So what you wanna do is establish as strong of a presence as possible so that when you have buyers that are searching at the intent level, they're choosing your brand. There's other things like discovery. Do I have a problem or not? Um, now I'm considering, hey, maybe I do have a problem. I wanna look at uh, you know, working with you. That's, how you. that's how you write and establish your own content. So you wanna attract people. You wanna have a, basically a presence in each one of those um, levels. But the reality is intent level is marketplaces. Uh, they directly funnel leads to your website um, or other points of contact. And uh, purely from an attraction standpoint, it makes sense that you'd want your practice to have a presence on sites where visitors are viewing profiles for others in your industry. Uh, if your competition is present, then obviously you should be as well. Social media. Um, this is kind of obvious. I know some people hate social media, especially today it's gotten political and all the issues. Um, I'm not getting into that part. The reality is seven in 10 Americans use social media. Um, it is a basically free distribution channel of your message. It's a way that you can showcase and share your expertise. You can showcase and share your reviews, uh, your knowledge, and you can start communi communicating with uh, prospects and clients. Um, your prospects are spending time in these platforms, whether you like it or not, and they are being presented ads from your competitors. So uh, this could be even your current clients. Your current clients are being marketed to right now. And if you don't also have your own presence, it's, it makes people get a little bit of doubt, right? Am I missing out? Is this person doing it better than the way you know, I'm getting it from my, my current uh, professional? So you wanna make sure your practice is present as well. So whether it helps you attract new clients directly from seeing your content, or they find you through a friend sharing your post, or they see one of your profiles listed in some Google search results, more eyes will be navigating to your brand's web properties. And that's decidedly uh, valuable. So now I've mentioned directories and listings and citations before, but let's go in a little more detail. This is part of the algorithm that Google uses when comparing brands to each other. There's some studies done by Moz and some others that we work with, uh, but the reality is um, think of the directories as a modern day phone book. So you want your information um, to be accurate. So if you have moved, 
if you've changed phone numbers, if you've uh, merged, whatever, you need to make sure the internet knows about this information. So we have a service through our VIP programs, whether that be our spotlight program or our growth product where we will manage directory listings for our clients. Um, but basically you wanna prioritize staying up to date on whether the information uh, you provide is accurate, right? Um, in, in any profile that exists with inaccurate information about you can confuse both your prospects and the search engines. And I think that's the important thing to, to realize. So while you think this might be you know, just an added expense, it does A, it's a variable in the algorithm and B, um, people do find you through the directories, okay? And, and they may reach out to a phone number and it's disconnected and just looks poorly. You may lose a client because of that. Um, and obviously uh, at CountyWorks Pro, our, both our two higher level products, we include directly listing and citation building uh, directly into our product offering. So it is something not to uh, forget about. Which brings me into Google My Business. Google has continued to expand its, uh, well, I guess we'd call it a monopoly of the search results and pushing their services and products. And what you'll see is Google My Business is continuing to take more real estate on the search results. Uh, and Google My Business is uh, what they own. So we have, uh, we have Google Search, we have Google My Business and YouTube. Those are the three properties we really focus on. So it is crucial to have to optimize Google My Business listing. 45% of Google searches include local intent. So we talked about intent before. Um, this is a statistic from Google, uh, meaning Google is displaying top rated GMB, we call them GMB, profiles front and center on the search results. Um, and you wanna be that brand, right? There's also um, some things that we do to uh, optimize the GMB by the way of uh, posting pictures, um, content. There's uh, things that we have um, developed over the years that have made our, our professionals um, rank better. So the majority of GMB results um, that are actually acted upon are zero click searches. So this might be clients just trying to get directions to you or your contact information. And again, reviews are big. So we work very heavily on getting your Google My uh, Business profile full of five-star reviews. Google also likes those reviews to be fresh meaning you just don't do it one time a year, you do it year round. Uh, so that's something definitely to, um, to think about. Uh, there is a secret to getting ranked higher in GMB. We've been doing that for our clients for many years. So if you are interested in this, it's definitely something to reach out after this webcast and speak to one of our professionals to kind of talk over some of our offerings when it comes to optimizing your Google My Business profile. Um, so this is something that is uh, important, June, 2021. Uh, Google uh, updated its algorithm. They update their algorithm all the time. So to try to stay on top of it is, is about as much fun as staying on top of the tax code, right? Uh, but what they did on this one is several years ago, they started focusing more on your mobile experience. So what uh, it was kind of a mobile first indexing. So they, uh, Google is saying, hey, more people are using their phones. We need to optimize for search on phones. What does that mean? That means lightweight websites are getting ranked better. There's less real estate. There's, you need to be able to tell your story in fewer words using images, uh, copy, et cetera. So uh, what they're looking at now, which is called page experience, is, is speed is a huge component. Is it uh, mobile friendly, responsive? Is it protected by HTTPS? Um, I still, it astounds me how many clients still have a non-secure website. And that's, that's against the IRS, or not regulations, but... Um, they do basically say tax and accounting professionals need to have uh, things like reCAPTCHA, HTTPS in there. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different things that you should be complying to that uh, people, uh, one, you're protecting yourself against uh, phishing attacks. Uh, but also think about it. If a consumer drops in on your website and you're asking for them to leave information about them, specifically when you're dealing with personal financial in information, and your site's not secure, where do you think? These people aren't gonna hit your form. So definitely understand how that affects your uh, Google um, SEO results. Uh, what else is there? Load speed, interactivity, visual stability. Uh, there's a bunch of things. We've spent, um, let's see, seven months now redesigning our entire site editor and the way we build sites um, based 100% on what Google's doing. And not only that, but it's also on the psychology of how 
um, consumers are making decisions and specifically the more information you have on a site. So content is good when it comes to ranking and indexing when people are in a research mode, but too much content is not good when you're trying to sell them to become a client. You need to have much cleaner, um, simplistic sites. You need them to be fast. You need them to score well in the Google scores, um, speed scores, but you want it so that when someone is looking at your site, you're not making their brain have to you know, read and understand every single word of what you're saying, you know, terminology that their brain has to kind of sit back and go, okay, what does that mean? The more simplistic your site is, the more of an elevator pitch your site is designed at, you're going to convert better. Uh, we see it in our own simple sites. A lot of our professionals, for whatever reason, you know, they, their old website was just loaded with all this content and busy homepage. We try to explain to them as much as you can, do not do that. There's a reason the top converting companies in the world have very simplistic websites. Go to Slack, go to Apple. These brands know it because it works. You need to do the same thing. You need to emulate them. Um, so understanding these signals uh, it should be a big priority for you if you're reconsidering or considering changing your website provider or doing a redesign. Uh, and make sure that you optimize for mobile, page speed. Uh, call to actions, uh, alt text. There's a bunch of different things that you can do to index better. But uh, Google algorithm changes are here. Uh, the next big trend is video. And we, we've had a, a video library tool for some time. We also integrate uh, our video libraries directly to YouTube so you can start pushing content to YouTube. As the, the cord cutting continues, People are spending as much time on YouTube, on their TV, as they are on Netflix and some other tools. So what you must understand is your content needs to be there. You need to have a presence on YouTube. So uh, creating a video for tax and accounting practice is an effective attraction technique. Helps you stand out, right? Helps you communicate. That can reach your prospects across various online channels. That's the beauty of it. You can throw it into YouTube, your social channels, you can put it on your blog. Um, this does not have to be an expensive undertaking and it does not have to be super highly published, um, but you definitely need to start thinking about um, creating video content. We do both vlog content, so meaning video versions of our blogs uh, and also promotional content. So more kind of overviews of what you do um, as, a, as a practice. You know, what is the pain point of your consumer? How am I gonna help them? Uh, we have several different packages um, on the video side, so this is another thing, um, not overselling here, but if you are interested in creating videos for your practice, we do offer that uh, built into our tool. So definitely reach out to one of our experts at the end of this webcast. Articles and content. Um, I can't sell this enough. Um, we think our, our newsletter that we create for our clients, so it's an automated monthly newsletter, um, we publish lots and lots of articles, both for tax, IRS tax problems, personal finance, business accounting issues, but content creation is one of the leading factors in search engine rank and by extension, attracting prospects to your brand and website. So someone who's going, you know, the amateur website builder might build a site, add a blog and write two blog articles and never do it again. 50% of our content, or not content, 50% of our traffic to our um, our customers comes to their blogs. If you add social on top of that, it, the, the numbers change a little bit. 10% comes from social on top of that. So it's a, it's a big deal. Um, and if you're not doing that, you're at least getting half the traffic you should be getting. So definitely look into adding um, important articles and relevant content. So what do we say? We're creating relative, uh, relevant, accurate, and high quality content for your blog and website increases your topical authority online. So Google is also starting to realize there's a lot of people writing about content, or not content, about uh, topics that they don't understand. Um, you'll see a lot of mainstream media articles that miss out entirely on the technical aspects, whether it be a tax issue, whether it be uh, client, uh, you know, uh, tax research credits, whatever it is. Um, so it's definitely important that professionals like yourself have the ability to write articles, uh, share content. We have a uh, done for you that you can uh, add to uh, the blog article. So meaning we have tons and tons of articles that you could edit, uh, you could use, and you can add upon your, uh, um, your own content. So uh, writing original content for your blog helps you 
with the later stages of the retention cycle. So the beyond the attract, right? That's when they're considering and getting ready to convert. Those are the stages we wanna start seeing your brand have a presence. So articles on timely topics and helpful information will keep you, uh, keep people returning to your site to learn from you. And they make for great additions to your email newsletter as well. One thing I wanna mention here, uh, if you're writing your own content, life events, whether that be individuals or businesses, is a huge area. Things happen year round. And if you do not plan for these life events, by the time you're doing a tax return or finan you know, finishing financials for a company, a lot of times it's too late. You need to be proactive. You need to be in the advisor mode. Articles and content help you do this. So influence clients in changing times. Uh, so how to positively influence your clients. And we, we say it's, it's your time to shine, right? You've gone through the long process of attracting prospects, proving yourself as a worthy practice to consider uh, and converting them to paying clients. So now it's time to provide outstanding service and earn their recurring business, earn that five-star review. Um, you want to, uh, to turn your clients into ambassadors. You want uh, them to be talking about your brand and that's gonna be the, the fastest way for you to grow exponentially. It becomes more of a, a system approach versus a one-to-one -one, you know, adding of clients. So, Basically, as we say, positively influence their lives. Make them, because of your advice, see you know, tax minimization so they can have more money to spend on their family. Um, with a business, helping that business succeed, teaching them what metrics are important, um, how to look at cash flow first, profit first mentality. There's a lot of ways that you can positively um, uh, influence these people's lives and give them better financial outcomes. So, when it comes to serving your clients, start with thinking through how you would want uh, to be served by a provider in your own life. You know, so for in instance, say you work with an attorney for something in your personal life, what traits would be important to you? So I want you to start thinking about these things when you uh, start uh, establishing how you work, how you communicate, how you um, showcase your expertise. So what do your clients care about most? We did a big survey of 2,500 business owners and high net worth individuals and this was the, not that this should be a surprise to you, but there's a couple of things here that a lot, a lot of times independent tax and accounting pros forget. And a couple of these things um, in the reality, we see negative reviews about. So number one, knowledge. So is there a way that you can make a perception that you are more knowledgeable about a subject than others? This, is, this gets into other uh, workshops that we've done, whether other webcasts, uh, specifically on niches. Um, and that is a way that you can differentiate yourself from a generalist. And there could be a perception that you know more than the competitor, even though that may not be true. The reality is if you do work in niches, you probably will identify, you'll be able to do your job quicker, uh, spend less time researching, et cetera. So knowledge, number one, number two, trustworthiness. How do you communicate trustworthiness? Well, based on your designation, some would say. Um, advisors, accountants are rated the number one trusted advisor for a reason. You know, they deliver, but the trustworthiness is what they see when they read about you. It's how you communicate. You're not selling them. You're being honest with them when you're working with them. Um, those are areas that I think are really important. Number three is I think the, everyone could probably look in the mirror and say, if there's one area that I could probably improve upon is responsiveness. And I, you know, usually the pushback is, I am so busy, I don't have time to do this. The reality is, well, then either cut the amount of clients you have because that's unfair to them and you, um, increase your prices or whatever, or come up with a, 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 a process that makes you more responsive. And when I say responsive, if someone comes in with an answer or request, even if you don't have the answer right now, just respond. Hey, thanks, Lee. I, I know uh, um, I, I got this. I'm working on it. It's in my queue. I'll get back to you on X date. And then surprise them and maybe come in you know, a few days sooner. But at least having that responsiveness is uh, a key you know, trust building uh, uh, attribute. And what we see on one star reviews is responsiveness, responsiveness, responsiveness. They don't recall, they don't call me back, their voicemail is full. I can't tell you how many times we've seen professionals with their voicemail full. It's crazy. I mean, with digital technology, VoIP technology, how could your voicemail ever be full? But those are kind of things that you need to think about. And then one thing that th people kind of miss is friendliness. They want to have your personality, to understand your personality. You know, a lot of uh, clients consider you as a friend and being friendly and 
and showing personality in your branding, I think is really important to be successful. It helps you stand out as well. So definitely these four things are things that your clients care about most and definitely things you should consider when looking at your own practice and areas to improve. Okay, here is our second polling question. So which of these characteristics of a tax and accounting pro was the most important in our survey of small business owners? Was it A, loyalty, B, knowledge, C, friendliness, or D, time management? Wow, we're trying to make these hard this time. <laughs> they can handle it. Go ahead and give you another 10 seconds or so to answer. And here we go. B, knowledge. Okay, moving on to influence and satisfy, um, which basically we say one and the same. So positively influence your clients' lives means more than just providing five-star service, though that is crucial. It also means doing the simple things that can make your clients happy every day. And we're going to share a few ideas here for you. Make it easy to communicate with you. I, I, I talk to some professionals who are like, my clients are only able to talk to me in this way. And that's fine if that works for you and your clients aren't pushing back. But the reality is there's a lot of new competitors that are using technology um, that are making it easy for your client or your current clients to communicate with them and to work with them. So not everyone wants to follow your exact rules and formats. You know, I know there's some arguments, well, I don't want to work with them as clients. That's fine. Make that decision. If you want to be uh, successful and to grow to kind of the, the highest levels, you need to make it easy to communicate with you. So whether that be by email, phone, um, web-based interviews, uh, teleaccount and Zoom, whatever you're using, a chat box using AI on your website, that can help you convert more consumers um, to clients based on um, sharing information, making it easy for them to find information on your site. Uh, social media messaging. These are a bunch of different ways. So uh, we like to say protect your free time. So, but make sure your clients know you, your team are available to help. Uh, and technology can do a lot of the answering for you. Um, it uh, is definitely, if you're not using VoIP, uh, chatbots, whatever, it's definitely things you should start considering. Be consistent with managing communication. So if you're on vacation, set a vacation responder. Don't have someone think, what, you know, I sent someone, I sent a message on X day and 14 days later, I get a response. Well, you were on vacation. You're like, well, I was on vacation, but you didn't communicate that. So just use these, you know, kind of common sense items, right? Um, approach communication from the viewpoint of the client. So try to understand the drivers that may be behind why they're reaching out to you. If they seem frustrated or anxious, do your best to talk through the issue and answer any of the questions they have. So this is an easy one. It's kind of common sense, I know. Um, here's an example of our teleaccountant tool. We have uh, hosted millions and millions and millions of minutes of meetings this tax season. I'm very proud of the tool that we created. We uh, integrated uh, the secure client portal directly into our interview tool. So you are able to not only just have a, 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 a meeting, you can share the documents, you can request the documents, you can take a screen capture of your client's ID to verify their identity. You can record the session for you or your staff to go back. Um, there's screen sharing, there's all that. But what's nice about our tool, uh, not, in, not only does it integrate all of the document sharing uh, side, uh, but it also is web-based tool. So meaning if you don't have an app, like Zoom requires you to download an app or you don't have the latest version of the app, um, with a web-based tool, all you need is a, an internet connection. So it can be on your mobile device, iPad, desktop. You don't need, your user does not need to download anything before they talk to you. So definitely if you haven't checked out our teleaccountant tool, um, please do that. You can trial that in our, our free trial sites as well. So uh, even at the scale level, we include teleaccountant in the subscription. So definitely something to look at. Uh, number two, simplify the process of exchanging and signing documents. Oh, I just was talking about that. But uh, the reality is I still see people not using secure ways of communicating, um, still using email. Um, you know, with the amount of fraud going on, that's crazy. You know, you do not want that information to get out there. Uh, so as we continue moving into digital age, and especially after COVID-19, it's even more crucial to consider these type of tools, uh, including e-sign technology. So we have a uh, uh, eSign built into our tool, even for the 8879s, uh, KBA, uh, you know, you need to make sure that everything complies with the IRS 
uh, knowledge-based authentication uh, requirements. So definitely look at those type of things uh, when you're, those type of technologies when you're looking at your own practice. So that being said, your client security should be a top priority. Don't fall for phishing uh, techniques. Don't uh, send documents that are, uh, should be secure via email, okay? Uh, or any other unsecured channel. Your practice can easily implement a secure portal and e-sign technology. Um, obviously, we build those into our County Works Pro uh, platform, uh, but it's, there's all lots of different tools. So if you like having four or five tools to do these certain things, definitely look into them and make sure, I mean, most people are, but you know, we even heard people during when COVID started, they had to shut down their offices because they couldn't utilize this technology. They had not set themselves up for this type of technology. Obviously, today's world, um, you don't need to. Automate messaging e-cards. This is I mean, this is what we say, put your marketing on autopilot. That's what we do at County Works Pro. Um, our, you know, our CRM platform kind of does that. We have all this built-in content. But basically, add a personal touch to your client communication. You know, there's these little surprises that really help your client uh, relationships. Uh, and they can influence their lives throughout the year. So, you know, very few people probably expect a gift card or a holiday card or a birthday card for their accounting or tax pro, right? Um, so it's greatly appreciated when sent. So set up automated emails or e-cards for important due date reminders, um, important dates in your clients' lives, and major holidays. Again, an another very easy thing to integrate into your marketing material. Keep their information safe and secure. Few professions have felt the brunt of identity theft, like the tax and accounting profession. Uh, we're in the crosshairs, you know, so clients may have had their identity stolen and have to deal with fraudulent tax returns, huge pain. Uh, and you, it's a huge pain for you. And your firm could get hit with spoofing emails, phishing emails. We've uh, written some blog articles of things you need to look out for, um, but definitely take security seriously. It is important to understand that many of these issues are truly not hacks. And when people say, well, I got hacked. No, someone getting your username and password is not a hack. You know, they didn't go through some firewall to get into your back end. They went in through the front door. So that's just carelessness. And, you know, be... Uh, wise to create your own policies here. Make sure you use the best practices. Uh, you know, so a few ways to keep your clients' information safe. Use a secure client portal. Never send files via email. Use an SSL certificate on your website. Uh, that's that HTTPS. Um, keep your operating systems updated. Nothing worse than falling behind on old browsers, um, old computer systems. It's not, I mean, you might, you're trying to cut costs. You're going to lose your entire business by doing that. So Use high security account passwords and update them often. If you're traveling, uh, invest in a VPN, uh, virtual private network connection to your office. These are things that are gonna really keep your clients information and your brand, your practice safe. Okay, so here's our third polling question. When is it acceptable to send sensitive client files via email? Is it A, when it's urgent, B, when they ask you to, C, when you need a signature, or D, none of the above? B should be when they demand you do. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, uh, this one's a pretty obvious answer, especially in the world of uh, phishing and hacking that's going on right now. Yep, it's a big topic. Give you another uh, five to 10 seconds here. And that's D, none of the above. All right, educate clients in changing times. So how to keep educating your clients consistently? And I've said it before, I'll keep saying it again. Um, the newsletter and the amount of information you push towards your clients is a vital part of your relationship. Um, whether that be in your retention rates, higher fees, referrals, it is something that you should focus on. Um, so in order to help them achieve their optimal financial outcomes, it's important to also continue educating and keeping them up to date on the latest news that may affect them. So this is what are different tax law changes, strategies that come uh, from those tax law changes. You are not speaking with your clients every day. You don't know exactly what's going on in their lives, but by communicating to them with your content, you are getting that reach out and they will see something that you've written about, or if you're using our service, we've ghostwritten about, that will, they'll say, wait a second, I need to talk to my accountant, right? So new legislation proposals, planning strategy, new sources of business financing, tax credits, um, business entity types, you name it. Uh, you want to continue uh, to educate your clients consistently. So here are some 
uh, best ways to do that blogging content and other copies. So writing is one of the best ways to disseminate important information to your entire client base at once, but it can be hard to fit writing into your busy schedule. We figured out it's probably costs, what well, we're up to, I think 20 to 30 articles a month now. So it's probably 50, $60,000 minimum. If you tried to find a, an expert to write the content, to proof it, both grammar and uh, technical, and then to, um, write in a storytelling way. You know, there's a, there's a lot of th different things that go with this. Um, and that goes to your website copy, uh, your blogs, uh, your marketing library, whatever you're doing. So, you know, we said here it costs 20,000 annually. I'm, this is old. I'm telling you it's $50,000. It's a lot of work, uh, but there's no need. Our experts take care of your copy, your content needs so you can focus on your practice. And that's a thing um, that is uh, unique to our offering is the quality of our content. We, we don't do cookie cutter. We don't do thin content. There's, you know, if you compare our content and just the length of the breadth of what we do, it's night and day to our competitors. And more importantly, we understand how to write in their language, not uh, a lot of times accountants write in their language versus the, the prospect's language. So blogging content and other copy. Use your monthly newsletter to distribute content and update clients. This is the easiest way. It's your biggest asset, that client list, right? Make sure that their emails are up to date. If they get bounced, you know, have someone follow up with them. Try to you know, find their email on LinkedIn to get it updated. Give a phone call. It's important. So when done right, your client newsletter can be a powerful tool for building authority while also entertaining and educating clients. I've said that, entertaining and educating clients. Uh, we see this in the reviews of the newsletters of our clients, how much they enjoy it. Um, so it's a great tool. It also can be a tool to nurture your leads and expand referral paths. So Lawyers, realtors, estate planners, insurance agents, financial advisors, other pros that may refer you, um, put them on your email newsletter list. It keeps your brand in front of them. Uh, it keeps them educated, to be honest, right? There's a lot of things they may have missed. So uh, it might create other opportunities to drive business. So based on decades, our decades of experience within the industry and endless positive feedback we've received on our client newsletters, it could be argued that this uh, one offering by itself creates a greater return than the subscription fee. And I always say, if someone gets their database loaded into our platform, they are gonna be clients for life. Um, the biggest hurdle we have is getting people to buy in or spend that five to 15 minutes of getting their database to us. Once we do that, if we get a review campaign out and once we get your social set up, you're gonna be successful unless you're really lacking in some other areas of responsiveness or other things. So uh, definitely use your monthly newsletter. Be active on social media. We mentioned the importance of social media for attracting new clients earlier, but it's also a helpful tool for getting information to your client base. Now think about that. It's free distribution. Um, your clients are online all the time. They're gonna see your posts, whether they engage in them or not. It's one is your brands in front of them. And two, if there is some life event or some topic that you hit on that matters to them, you are going to get an inbound phone call. You are gonna drive uh, the ability to drive more business, right? Um, but the more active you are, so we do for our clients, we share their blogs, we do curation, we do due date reminders, curating. We, I think uh, there was one month we were looking, I think we had 60 different um, posts to our clients' uh, social sites. That's a lot of content. That's uh, getting in their face, you know, multiple times of the day. Uh, we get a lot of activity from it. And even if they're not, again, liking everything or commenting everything because you know a lot of the topics we are, we're doing are not what we'll call the viral side uh, we do, are getting a little edgier with some things that people can decide you know i want to turn them on or off with memes and some other things on some new tools that we're uh, rolling out here in, later in the year but the reality is um, social media matters encourage all your clients and prospects to follow your accounts uh, we have some emails that can go out that will uh, Ask people to follow you and those work really well. And then also mention it to clients, put it on uh, your business cards, your email signatures, wherever. Uh, if you don't have time to run your uh, own social uh, media accounts, curate content and et cetera, guess what? CountyWorks Pro can automate it all for you. And that includes your Google My Business um, profile. We have uh, built an API connection to there as well. And uh, it's been doing really well for our clients, giving them positive signals for GMP so they rank better against their competition. So attract, influence, and educate clients. So forward-thinking CPAs, EAs, tax and accounting practices know how important it is to be a trusted advisor to their clients. 
Uh, this is from the first conversation through the rest of the relationship. So use our tips from today to gain and retain more clients by positively influencing their lives and keeping them educated on how to achieve their ideal outcomes. We truly believe in this at County Works. It's about creating better financial outcomes. It is something that we're passionate about. And our goal is to make it so the market share of the independent accountants and tax pros continues to gain against a lot of the amateur, whether it be the DIY tools, the amateur type tools, automation only goes so far. The reality is this automation works both ways. Accountants now can be more efficient and you can move to uh, different pricing schemes. We've talked about that in our first impressions and some of our other webcasts, but the ability for you to now act like a software business, create monthly recurring subscriptions, you can charge more, you can take, <laughs> take your life back, you can have a better lifestyle, and you can actually make more money by kind of changing the way that you look at your practice. So that's definitely things that we talk about in other uh, presentations, but I hope the, the, the pointers that I've left you here uh, today um, can be taken you know, directly in the next couple of weeks, months, um, and get it going. So what does County Works Pro do? We help forward-thinking tax and accounting firms attract, influence, and educate clients and develop meaningful relationships at scale. That's the big difference. So in the old days, one to fun, one referrals come in. In the modern day, we have all these different tools, all these different marketing funnels, nurturing uh, with our content that help you automate this. You can scale your practice so you can grow larger than you could have in the past. The reality is we have tools that are all integrated into one uh, automated platform uh, that starts as low as $80 a month. And these are tools that um, definitely will help your practice grow. If you took, we took out, a, did a little study. If you took out all the tools that we have and how much it would cost to manage all this, there was a value of about 16 22 a month versus our $80 starting fee. So it's a significant thing. So it's time, resources, value, right? So definitely compare that when you're looking at tools and if you're, if you're looking to make a change. I can speak all day long about how well we do things, the results, but the reality is our clients do the best uh, storytelling for us. And we have a, a section on, uh, on the website for case studies and it has some of our best performing uh, partners you know, like uh, uh, Olaru's Premier Tax Services, 900% search engine visibility growth, 335% uh, organic traffic growth. Uh, Stephen Vo, a CPA, 235 new leads, 102 online reviews. That's crazy, right? So our, our platform does that all for you. So we'd love to share with you um, any of these case studies. If you wanted just to, to, to see kind of what people are, are experienced with us, um, feel free to look at our Google My Business profile as well with all our five-star reviews. Okay, and here's our final polling question. Do you want additional tips and tricks on how to attract, influence, and educate clients in changing times? Of course, we hope this will be yes, but up to you. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, additional information that uh, we can share with you in ways that we can uh, change your direction on the your digital marketing in 2021. So hopefully you will engage us and uh, give us a chance to kind of share some of our philosophies and what's working. So this one's an easy answer. I'll give you a few more seconds. And then I think we're getting ready to get into the Q&A. Ah, so I almost forgot special offers. If you mention Web20, you can get 20% off the first three months for any new client or new add-on monthly County Works Pro package. It will also waive any setup fees. This can be a savings up to $495. So please write that down, Web20, and share that with uh, when you do uh, reach out to us, share that with uh, one of our representatives, and we'll make sure you get that discount when you get going. Um, uh, with anything, some restrictions apply. It must be a new client or a add-on, a new marketing service. Uh, offer expires uh, and must be purchased within 60 days of this webcast. So we hope you take advantage of the webcast. And now it's time to get into our Q&A. So uh, Lauren, I know this I, presentation went almost 50 minutes, so we're, we're going to try to for me, try to keep the Q&A a little bit shorter. So maybe pick three, uh, three questions and let's uh, get into that. Sure, hopefully these will be easy ones for you. Uh, the first question we have, you mentioned Google My Business. Can you explain how that works again? You said easy, <laughs> that's, a, that's a long one. That could be a webcast in itself. And um, let me just start back again. What is Google My Business? It's a free tool that helps tax and accounting pros manage their online presence across Google search engine and its growing uh, portfolio of other utilities. Uh, so 
no, Google My Business listing does not replace your business's website. Uh, so uh, Google My Business does give you your practice a free way to make yourself visible on Google search and through the Google Maps uh, local guide functionality. So when you, you know, anytime you're looking for directions, you do a Google uh, search for a business, the Google My Business listing is what's coming up in Maps. So uh, what is nice is this is uh, kind of a complement to your current existing website. And it gives you a public identity and presence, uh, you know, with a listing on Google. So think about it; it's just more real estate. If you have a prominent Google My Business listing, when the search results show, you're going to have a, you're going to have paid listings, you're going to have organic search, and you're going to have Google My Business listings. This is more on branded search, but uh, you obviously see that's a very important thing. If you're in the first three of Google My Business, um, the chances of you getting uh, more traffic than your competitors increases significantly. Um, so. If your business has been around a while, um, you know you may already have a GMB listing. You don't know it. If you have not claimed it, please claim it afterwards. There is a process that uh, you're required to verify uh, your Google My Business uh, listing. But the reality here is GMB will amplify your digital presence. So it's an important thing. Um, once you successfully have a, a listing, you can access it and manage it as if it was your own. So you can do your own editing. Uh, you can get start attracting reviews. You can add pictures. You can post to it. Uh, you're also, you know, the first thing, the most important thing is you start out with choosing the right category. So, what is your practice focus? Let's make sure that that category best describes the client type of clients you're looking for. Uh, that's how they're going to rank you, and that's kind of how they're going to associate your Google My Business listing with the, the different keywords. Um, you uh, will also be able to add locations that clients can visit um, or uh, in today's world with COVID-19, it might be a service area. So this is important. You may not be seeing clients anymore in person, uh, but you can choose a service area. So this is valuable info since many CPAs, EAs, and accounting experts operate as service area businesses and do not allow or need clients to see them anymore. And especially now with virtual tools like teleaccount and Zoom, et cetera, you're able to see many new clients without them actually coming into your lobby, waiting, you know, going through the traditional process. Um, there's a couple of things I wanna make sure you think about though. Um, when you do a service area, your brand still will show up in the relevant areas. So don't stress about having a physical address. Google does use with physical addresses, um, city centers, and they will put listings that are closer to the searcher's proximity, closer or higher in the results. So sometimes we'll have people who have a, a GMB listing in a city, but they're outside, they're not in a highly dense, densely populated area, they may not do as well. But so understand that when you're deciding where to actually choose which office you're gonna be in. Um, and you know, certain cities uh, like Orlando is one of them, Atlanta is another one um, where it becomes very tricky. So it's definitely something, a, a strategy that you need to think, uh, think about. The other thing is when you do claim your listing, Google will send you a postcard via US mail. This usually takes three to five business days. Do not throw that away. <laughs> that is how you verify to Google that um, you are the owner of that account and they are confident that they are gonna give you access and then publish, um, publish your listing. So verifying your listing is key. If you do not follow that step, then you're still gonna be in unclaimed status and that will hurt your results. Um, a couple of other helpful tips here, uh, photographs on your practice listing improve the likelihood of it being searched for. Um, I have some statistics that uh, we use quite often. Practices with photos in their listings receive 42% more requests for driving directions on Google Maps and 35% more click-throughs to their website than businesses without photos. And that's according to data from Google. And I would guarantee you that Google knows, right? Another big thing that Google suggests, and th we've seen this with our clients, we have an automated posting tool where we will push blog content, relevant content to your GMB profile, but basically they say post to your profile. And the reason they want you to do that, the more active your business is, one, it's a better experience for visitors, but more importantly, Google rewards you. So um, posts let you engage with your prospects uh, and clients, obviously, but it keeps your presence fresh on Google. Um, and I've said, you know, the Google thinks that businesses that are more active are more trustworthy and that's part of the algorithm. Um, the, what else would I say? I'd say there's something about a tool like Google that owns 90% of the worldwide search demand. So if you're not considering GMB a vital part of your 
uh, especially local search strategy, but a digital search strategy, uh, you're really missing out. And the ways to optimize those quickly, again, verify them, get all the data, make sure you have the right category, generate as many five-star reviews as you can and fresh uh, post fresh content often, including pictures of yourself, your staff, you know, you with your clients, things like that. Um, definitely things to look at. We do provide GMB optimization services with clients that subscribe to our spotlight or growth packages. This is worth uh, the subscription really. So definitely something to think about, but there, there's my shortest answer possible on GMB. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't an easy one. I'll, I'll give you that much. But yeah, definitely Google. I mean, unless something drastically changes in the next few years, we're kind of stuck with them. So we have to make sure that we're playing by their rules and playing their game. Um, for our second question, how do I know to how do I know how to set up a package? Yeah, you're, I, so I'm sure this is referring to pricing and and subscription businesses. Um, so why, you know, why should you use packaging? Uh and the way I explain this is services position as products make it easier for clients to actually see the value you can offer them. Um, and meaning that you're, you're transparently showing them, if you pay me this much money, this isn't like some black hole where I'm just charging you hourly and you don't know what's going on. You are basically providing a trust signal to the consumer that, hey, you, you invest money in me. This is what I will do for you and I will provide this type of outcome. So there's several ways to do value pricing and or package pricing. Some will actually price, you know, if you're in, if you're doing things like R&D credits, uh, they will actually put a, a, a number, a percentage number on the amount of money or even big tax planning uh, type strategies. They'll put a value that says, hey, if I save you 100,000, the fee is 20,000. It really gets that uh, lucrative and clients can say, wow, if you can find something that someone else couldn't, um, you know, I'm willing to spend that kind of money if I'm actually $80,000 ahead. So uh, a couple of things, there's countless reasons to start selling packages, um, but I'm going to give you a few. So use packages to define and sell your services is what I was just trying to say. Use packages to scale. So a scalable business is where you can do repeat business in, in a system. So I could say once I start, if I bring a hundred leads from the internet to a specific landing page, I know X percentage of clients are going to become leads or not pro clients, prospects will become leads. And then if I nurture those leads, I know X percentage will become clients. So basically that is a scalable business model because you can just um, up the amount of money that you're spending on bringing in your, in feeding your funnel. And then it's just a matter of, okay, if I can handle 10 new clients a month, I'm spending this much. Great. If I want 20, I can scale it and I can add to the advertising budget. Um, more importantly, I think is more about life work balance and you can use packages to create more free time. So meaning if you're not billing by the hour, you are perhaps saving some time that you would have worked on that same project for a client, but in, you know, by packaging in a different way. Um, I want to make sure it's very clear. I don't think packaging value pricing is by any means a, a fad. We had someone on a recent uh, tax buzz chat saying, yeah, it's, it's a fad. It will, you know, it will go away. No, consumers now have changed the way they buy products. And just because you're providing a package does not mean you're selling a commodity. And I, I always say it's quite the opposite, actually. Packages can absolutely be created. You can do them for different niches um, and they can be uniquely crafted to cater to high-end, highly lucrative client relationships. When I say niches, you might have a package that's geared towards SaaS companies or startups. And you're now differentiating yourself from a commodity because you're specializing. You might do package pricing to uh, you know, with all the new restaurants that are going to be starting up post COVID, you might have packages that are targeting restaurants. And that is, I don't think anyone would argue that that is a commodity because there's going to be very few people doing that. So those are the things I wanted to kind of think about. We have written a, an extensive blog article. If you go to the County Works Pro site, um, I'm just looking this up right now. Uh, it's called How to Use Packaging to Take Back Your Time and Grow Your Tax and Accounting Practice. Um, Google that or just search it in our search box and you will be able to read a lot more on our uh, kind of our best practices on how to do that. Yep, good tip. Uh, our last question, what are some of your best tips for getting more customers from my website? Yeah, I think that's a challenge most accounting firms, tax firms have is they put up a website, but they don't put 
much thought in what's on it. You know, they, they, they try to cut corners. They try to save costs. You know, you know, we often hear, I, I don't want to spend that kind of money. And it's like, well, come on, you know, you're investing in your practice, bringing on one big client could add five, $10,000 a month in revenue. You know, what is a hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars a month on your marketing efforts. So these are the things that we use as a philosophy when we develop our digital presence for our clients. Uh, I start with focus. I say, keep it simple. Um, the other thing we see is most tax and accounting pros speak in their language, not their client's language. You need to use terminology that resonates with your target audience, not something that resonates with you and your uh, fellow CPAs or EAs or tax pros. Um, so by simplifying your copy and your visuals, you make it easier for you know the human to absorb and understand complex value propositions. What I mean by that is if, if a human is looking at this really busy website with all these acronyms that they don't know what they mean and lots and lots of copy describing services that they also don't understand, you're not talking to their, the, the prospect in their language, which is what is their main pain point? So let's identify that. How do we now um, communicate how you are going to solve that problem and make their life better? Okay. Um, use one main and a secondary call to action, make sure that main call to action, if that is call for a free discovery call, make sure it is big, bold, and stands out. So if I'm on a mobile device or I'm looking at your website on a desktop, I'm scanning that very quickly. My eyes should be able to see exactly, oh, there's my pain point. Oh, this guy is gonna give me, or you know, uh, this firm is gonna do this for me. I wanna talk to them where, you know, it would make it easy. So take the friction out of the buying process. Uh, you'll be shocked how emulating brands like Apple will pay off. And what I mean by that is the simplicity of Apple. I mean, and the, the argument we always had in the ad world and marketing world was comparing Microsoft to Apple. And if Apple was selling a product, it would be four words. And if Microsoft was selling that same product, there would be a 10 page white paper on it. And the, the reality is look who has succeeded. And Microsoft is still you know, doing their best to catch up to Apple's simplicity, but I think it's a big deal. Um, we have a bunch of uh, case studies we follow as well. Um, we, we look at data, we look at um, colors. So if you're going after certain types of targets or prospects or demographics, you know what is the psychology between your color scheme, uh, the fonts that you use. There's a lot of different ways we develop the way we build our default sites. And th that's kind of what we take to um, build out your site. So definitely there's a lot to this, uh, but getting a highly converted site takes, it is a skill. Um, I, that's when I feel bad for the DIY kind of amateurs that try to build their own presence. We definitely can add value there, but I, I hope that answers the question. I think we're running real late here. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, again, thank you for joining us for this webcast. If you would like to continue the conversation with us, feel free to reach out to countyworkspro.com uh, to check out our offerings and our pricing, or you can call us directly at 800 442 2477 extension three. Feel free to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Lee Reams the second is my um, call on that on LinkedIn. But uh, we hope to uh, see you on further uh, webcasts and hopefully uh, chat with you soon. Thank you again.